looking at the adult birds, obviously they've got that very developed flap of skin underneath their bills. Look at those beautiful eyes. And in females, yeah, that's definitely an adult male. In females, there is a patch of bluish skin underneath that, a baldish bluish color. That is one of the distinctions between a male and a female. Oh, that feather looks like it could actually do with plucking, mister. Michael, you want to know, because we've spoken quite a bit about how endangered they are and the difficulties that ground hornbill face when they it comes time to reproduce. Michael would like to know if there are any known ground hornbill nests in neighbor, on neighboring properties. One that I know of, yes. Look at this. A little bit of mutual grooming. That's not an adult. That is most definitely a younger one. Looking a bit scruffy and fluffy. And that's, there is the female over there. So I think we do have a breeding pair, and they're almost fully grown offspring. Look, a female gently cleaning the sub-adult. When they're very young, they have an almost yellowish patch around them. Sorry, Michael. Yes, we do, actually. There is a nest on Buffel's Hook. Not active at the moment. We're not in hornbill breeding season. That's between October to around about March, November to around about March. And it is in the strangest place I have ever seen a hornbill nest ever. It's in a where a dead limb of a marula tree has fallen off the tree itself. And it's this massive hollow cavern. And that is where we saw both the female and then a chick when Brent and I went to go and visit some friends there. So we do know of a ground hornbill nest. I immediately reported it so that the sabi sand could continue to manage it. I'm not sure if that chick survived. I hope that it did but it did seem to be a very, very exposed nest. It's the other hornbill nests I've found have also been in marula trees, but a lot more protected and a lot more covered. The last one that I found was years ago by following calling ground hornbills, but it was back when um, we were working with Mabula, which is the ground hornbill project. The last one I found was in a hollow of a, a dead branch of a marula tree, but the branch hadn't fallen off, so it had kind of made a a cylinder, a hollow cylinder that the chick was in. Unfortunately, that chick got eaten by, we think, a caracal. We found the claw marks the next, uh, a couple of days later, and the nest was bare. But it was quite a surprise, because basically the way that we checked for the hornbill chick was to put a GoPro on a stick, because we didn't want to disturb it too much. We just held it over. I had to stand on somebody's shoulders to get there, and then we held it over the nest, and there was this little chick it then very quickly attempted to attack the camera. Now, you don't mess with ground hornbill chicks. They can be vicious. Well, I suppose I don't blame it. I had no idea what we were. Karen would like to know why the ground hornbill is in a tree. Valid point, Karen. I think they're in a tree because they don't want to go into the damp grass. So ground hornbills roost at night in trees, like guinea fowl, like spur fowl. It's just a slightly safer place for them to be, especially when it's been raining. It's nice and sheltered up there. Uh, ground hornbills do roost in trees. However, they do spend most of their day on the ground. Here's the female. Oh, they, that's the way in which they find their food. Uh, Christina, very good question. You want to know, what is she doing? Is she regurgitating? No, she's breaking that branch. What are you after that you've heard in there? Whatever it is, I think she's decided that it's not that exciting. So, Christina, you want to know what color are their eggs and how many do they lay? It's sort of an off-white color, if I remember correctly. Quite large, and they only lay two. And that's one of the things that the Ground Hornbill Project has been involved with, because the second egg is an insurance policy with ground hornbills, like a lot of our birds of prey species. And what I mean by that is the first one to hatch is the survivor, or the, the one that's most likely to survive. 
and the second one that hatches a day or two later is just at such a disadvantage that it is continually outcompeted by its older sibling in terms of feeding, begging for the parent's attention, and often the older one will bully and peck at the younger one until eventually it dies. So it is almost guaranteed that a ground hornbill will only raise one chick. And that's one of the things that the ground hornbill project does is they take in the second egg. So what you've got to do basically is if you find a nest, I only ever managed this once, if you find a nest and you find it when the, there are two eggs, then you go every day and you check until the first egg hatches. And as soon as the first egg hatches, they would take the second egg, put it in an incubator and airlift it to a place just outside of Pretoria and continue to basically incubate the egg, hatch it and raise the ground hornbill with puppets so that they don't become imprinted or attached to human beings, which is quite a fascinating thing process, really. And the reason behind it is because ground hornbill numbers have dropped so dramatically, thanks to habitat loss, thanks to um, conflict with human beings, poaching potentially, uh, there's a lots of, lots of different reasons why ground hornbills as a species haven't been all that successful. And then, it's really very complex because they can't just release them back into the wild. They have to take them when they get a bit older and put them in a group with some older ground hornbills and they need to learn from them. Then they need to learn how to babysit because otherwise they don't breed successfully and only then can they be released back into the wild. So all of our ground hornbill sightings are recorded and put in a database. I have been completely distracted and left poor Byron in the lurch. Let's go and see how he feels about that. <laughs> 